uh, does anybody remember what was the last thing uh, in the last session types of sentences yeah i types think word sentences. level types of word level aspects sentences. we have um, types yes. of sentences types of sentences types of sentences types of sentences yes so yes all right so types of sentences we have finished four types of sentences and uh, yes that the last thing that we discussed was uh, sentence types should be addressed in the class in the sense they should be taught so students should practice students should get practice in making different types of sentences the best way to do that is integrating with the tenses that is what i said so we will discuss that uh, later when we go into the teaching aspects so uh, in sentence level grammar we have looked at sentence types which is easy most of you are aware of already uh, next is sentence structures um yeah i'll do one thing i'll just uh, close my presentation because uh, we cannot zoom this because it's an app no we are using this file in an app uh, okay can can i zoom okay i can zoom all right hope it is uh, okay sir anup sir yeah so uh, no sir no sir no sir no it's not is it not visible it's visible getting zoom it's getting zoom no no it, so it is that, clear it is clear the entire yeah. presentation can't be seen that's the problem sir it is very okay. clear uh, okay i will do one thing sir i will log out and will get in yes i think there's some problem at your end i have just zoomed in more Uh, see especially if you are doing it from smartphones maybe uh, you know the screen because the screen is small maybe that problems are there if you have a desktop or laptop better use them uh, it will be quite visible yeah so suman sir next yes ma'am yes sir sir uh, i find uh, a, another type of uh, sentence in few grammar books that is optative please could you please give details of the optative sentences yeah optative optative, sentences. yeah <laughs> yeah optative all all grammar books don't mention about optative actually these are the four types of sentences optative is a very negligible type of sentence in the sense uh, as you know see grammar the grammar that we find in books is is like uh, is a result of the research sir is a result of the research the study the constant study that happens on languages so traditionally we have had only four types of sentences this optative was there even before optative sentence was there as a fifth type of sentence but since not many sentences come under that category and we we use them rarely not very frequently usually some grammar most of the grammar books uh, don't mention about optative sentences so optative sentences are sentences uh, which express bless, uh, blessings and wishes right uh, so wishes for example goodbye these kind of sentences or may god bless you right uh, these kind of uh, blessings and wishes right uh, good luck goodbye all the best so these are all kind of sentences only in a way so where either you are expressing wishes or you are expressing blessings may god bless you may you have a happy married life like this these kind of uh, things okay so since usage wise in the sense they 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 uh, what you call we, we don't use them very frequently and very uh, uh, they don't have variations in terms of sentence structure also not much so we don't uh, teach and that's why you don't find them in uh, most of the books so these are optative sentences sir. sir thank you thank you sir yeah next is uh, sentence structures in the sentence level grammar the next important thing that we need to know is sentence structures these things uh, are very important for according to me high school 
uh, teachers because uh, you don't teach these to students you should not teach these to students but this knowledge will help you analyze sentences as high school teachers you should be analyze you should be able to analyze sentence structures why because uh, your ability to analyze sentences actually means you can able you you can uh, analyze students language you should be able to uh, by this ability you should be able to uh, analyze students language students mistakes when you analyze students uh, speech or students writing you should be able to identify their understand their mistake identify their mistake categorize them for example not only knowing that there is a mistake what kind of mistake is this is this mistake related to sentence structure is this related to some grammatical aspect is this related to word formation etc right so yes ramar reddy kanakal again sir i think i am audible to most of them if that is the case if there is any problem my end uh, my end i should not be audible for all of you uh, yes so ram reddy sir you, you should uh, check your uh, connection you should check your connection okay yeah coming back as i was saying that is why sentence structures are important this is not for teaching but uh, your own uh, ability to analyze uh, sentences we should be aware of basic sentence structures in english so as you can see the first sentence first one is the most basic uh, structure why do i say most basic because we cannot frame a sentence in english with subject and a verb these two are compulsory parts of a sentence so su one subject one verb now subject can be multiple words or a single word if a single word is there you call it noun you just usually nouns act as subject if more than one is there you call it a noun phrase for example look at the first sentence uh, functionally you are saying there are only two parts subject and verb but uh, number of words wise there are four words my friend is sleeping so uh, my friend is the subject and the subject is not single word so we call it as noun phrase right noun phrase some textbooks have these uh, phrases also i think uh, kerala textbooks i have seen uh, i have seen i don't know if they still have this in the kerala uh, textbooks noun phrase verb phrase etc uh, so my friend is a noun phrase right and is sleeping is a verb phrase you call it a verb phrase because it is not one single verb it's a combination of two verbs so sleeping is the main verb and is is the auxiliary verb okay so you still have geeta says yes right madam right so noun phrase verb phrase you have preposition phrase you have uh, adjective phrase adverb phrase like this so yeah so if a single word acts as a noun you call it as noun phrase if a group of words acts as a noun you call it noun phrase that's the only difference that's why your understanding of basic parts of speech is very very important you can have adverb phrase you can have adjective phrase you can have prepositional phrase etc right next is svo so this is the smallest sentence structure in english sv next is svo so o is an optional element s and v are compulsory elements in all sentence structures o is the object as you know object comes after the verb and object uh, usually receives the action there should be an action if there is an object in the sentence there should be an action okay so subject normally we define as subject is the doer of the action object is the receiver of the action all right so uh, there is also a shortcut no which teachers uh, usually use which uh, what and whom by asking the questions what and whom you always can identify the object you if you want you can test these by asking these two questions the company sells what mobile phones is the object he called whom because there is a person he called whom he called a teacher so these two are objects so you can have sv you can have svo after the verb you can have object next is after the verb you can have complement right a complement so first we should understand the, what is a complement here so a complement can be a noun or an adjective a complement can be a noun means which part of speech acts as a, a complement means a noun or an adjective whereas object only nouns and pronouns act as object whereas complement 
uh, it can be a noun, it can be a an adjective. So how do you identify a complement? Usually, complement follows a be form. Means there is a complement. Usually, the verb is a be form. Be form means is, am, are, was, were, right? These are the be forms. Usually, it is like that. So he is a teacher. Teacher is a noun here, but see, it is not an object. Why? Because there is no action. The verb is a, a be form, state of being, and the complement is an objective which refers to the subject. Usually, the complements are subject complements. Sometimes they can refer to objects. Based on that, we call it as a, a object complement. Can you all hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are hearing, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if you can see here, teacher directly refers to he, which is the subject. Similarly, Prem became a servant. Servant is also a noun. Now, servant directly represents Prem. It's not a different person, right? So, this is uh, how you identify. I mean, you can have compliments after the verb. Third sentence is an example of an adjective. Adjectives are also complement. Wherever you get adjectives, they always follow be forms. So they are also complements. Weak refers to Naina. So it is a complement. Okay. Um, I hope it's clear. Shall I move to the next slide? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. yes sir. Okay. Next, if you can see here. Yeah. Next important sentence structure is subject verb adjunct. Adjunct. Okay. This adjunct word is a technical word in the sense we, we use it as a functional name. That's all. But otherwise adjunct is nothing but commonly adverb. It is either an adverb or an adverb phrase. Right. We've talked about the adverb and adverb phrase difference. No. If a single word acts as an adverb, we call it as adverb. If a multi-word acts as a multi-word means combination of compound word, it's a phrase, group of words acts as an adverb, we call it as adverb phrase. So both adverb or adverb phrase, functional name is adjunct. Okay. So what is an adjunct? It's an adverb which gives additional information in the sentence. Okay. And it is also, I mean, it is additional information, means it's not compulsory. Okay. So... Here you see Karen cooks well. So this is adverb of manner. Next, they are working in the evening. So well is directly a word. Okay, word, adverb. But here if you see they are working in the evening. So when are they working in the evening? So in the evening is a phrase which is expressed in the time of action. So it's an adverb of time, adverb phrase of time. But whatever it is, whether it is an adverb or an adverb phrase, uh, by when labeling the sentence, we use a means adjunct. So S V A. That's it. Venkatramana uh, sir, yes, it is a prepositional phrase also. But uh, see, when it comes to these phrases, there is a formal name, there is a functional name, right? Just like, uh, for example, uh, Karen cooks well. What is Karen? If I ask you, parts of speech, you will say that it is uh, a noun. Okay. But uh, when I ask you to label in terms of sentence structure, you will say that Karen is the subject, right? So just like the same Karen, formal name is noun, functional name is subject. Similarly, in the evening, it's a prepositional phrase. That's a formal name because it is beginning with the preposition. But functionally, what is it? What is it functioning as? It is functioning as adverb here. So it is both prepositional phrase as well as Adverb phrase. Functionally, it is adverb phrase. All right. So, so can adjunct always be um, oh, adverb, sir? Yes. Adjuncts are always adverb. Some adverb or adverbial phrase. phrase? Adverb or adverbial phrase. Yes. Phrase. Yes. Functionally, it is adverb. Just like uh, nouns have a different name, like subject, uh, similarly, adverbs we call as adjunct only when labeling the sentences okay uh, but remember this is purely technical they should not go to students you have to give them practice but it should be functional practice not by giving this kind of technique because many teachers themselves are not aware of uh, you know sentence structures properly so forget about teaching to 
students yeah so subject verb adjunct adjunct i hope it is clear next you have you can have two objects in a sentence once you know what is an object similarly you can have two objects when you have two objects one is direct and one is indirect so for example s v o o we should give the children some money right we should give what money and whom to children so answer to what is the direct object answer to whom is the indirect object this is how you can remember direct and indirect object in a sentence so that's why object means you should remember these two wh words what and whom what is direct object whom is indirect object so you can you can check geeta sent what mail direct object geeta sent whom them indirect object okay the last and different among the basic sentence structures is object complement as i said svoc means why it's it's the same complement but then why are we talking about it differently means complements usually refer to subjects most of the time very rarely they refer to objects also in such case we call it as object complement simple the complement means that noun or that adjective is referring to the object rather than the subject that's all so if you can see example here they kept everyone busy now busy is the adjective here which is a complement now busy is referring to they or everyone just just notice and tell me busy refers to they or everyone everyone sir everyone obviously right of everyone everyone is the object of the sentence isn't it so it is a complement it is representing object so object complement so s v o c she made us capable again capable refers to us not she so capable is an adjective again so capable is object complement uh, she painted the wall green she painted the wall green now green refers to wall not she again uh, so that's an object uh, complement right so these are the basic sentence structures in english no matter how long or how short how different your sentences are uh, you can cut down all sentences into one of these if you really understand these properly these sentence structures so sentences can become longer or shorter based on how you combine these elements these are basic sentence structures see s v o i said after o you can have c after o you can have a after o you can have double a or you can have s v o o a a like this you know it it goes on functionally right so a small homework for you next i am going to give you a set of sentences 10 sentences you have to analyze them uh, and label their sentence structures like this s v a s v o o right you have to analyze so next i'll go to a particular slide you take a screenshot all of you take a screenshot uh, of that uh, slide and uh, later when you are free you can uh, identify the answers and you can post it in the group okay in the group you can discuss i will discuss uh, the right answers in the next uh, session okay so this is the 10 sentences all right all of you take a screenshot of these 10 sentences we'll discuss the answers later i mean i'll i'll check the answers in the next class all of you should have ready answers i'll check right i'll i'll expect answers from you before the next session all right have you have you noted down have you taken a screenshot yes sir you are now yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. yeah if some some of you are not able to for any reason take any screenshot somebody who has taken it please post it in the group okay yes yes now i will post it sir yes please post it in the group so that uh, if by chance if anybody uh, could not take the photograph you can all right okay next okay i'll just oh sorry
Surya Prakash sir has already posted. Wonderful sir. Thank you. <laughs> I'll change my slide. Just give me a moment. Is Chandrakala madam, do you want to ask something? You have raised your hand or is it by mistake? Alright, can you all see this slide? Yes, sir. It yes, visualizes functional grammar. Yes. Yes. Now yes. unmute it. Correct. Now, yes. now we have. Uh, can you mute yourself? Yeah, somebody's mic is echoing. Yeah. So, see, we have just revised. So far, what we have done is we have revised quickly all the technical aspects of parts of speech. Then we went to sentence level grammar. Sentence level grammar, we looked at sentence types, uh, sentence structures. The next important thing is tenses. Yeah, tenses is the most important area in the sentence level grammar because it is connected with uh, every other grammatical area. For example, you can never teach a student's uh, active passive voice properly unless students learn tenses properly. Do you agree? Yes. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Right. yes, same thing applies to reported speech also. Reported speech, degrees of comparison, simple compound complex. No other sentence level area can be taught. Yes, without students having learned uh, uh, tenses. And th not only that, these are all secondary reasons. There is a primary reason. A primary reason is in English, every sentence that you make whether it is speech or writing, every sentence that you make has to follow tense patterns. Without following the tense, without representing the tense, it is impossible for you to make a sentence in English. Isn't it? That is why tenses plays a very prominent role in sentence making process. Right? And if your students have to be, if your students should be able to speak better, write better, Focus on their sentence making capacities. Any exercises that helps in sentence building. They get practice in sentence making. So that is where tenses should be given the most priority according to me. Because if your students are able to make sentences properly, they can say anything, they can write anything. Right? In SSLC, your main target is most of you is at least pass mark. Your students are average, above average, yes, scoring uh, getting a high score is yes, but in the worst case scenario, right? What is your target? What will be your target? Ideally, is at least my student, every student has to pass the exam. So, when will a student be able to pass the exam? When he or she is able to write something, think something, think something first, write something on his or her own, isn't it? So, so that is why the sentence making uh, is important and in that process tenses plays a very very important role. So tenses uh, we will discuss later because uh, whether I discuss tenses or not more than that what is important is uh, how you teach grammar as I said. In the first class we have distinguished between formal and functional grammar. As I said already we won't be able to talk about much grammar because it's hardly five to six sessions each one of us have in this online program. So grammar is a very vast area. That's why I said uh, I'll discuss as much as possible, but my main focus will be on functional grammar, helping you understand functional grammar, which is very, very important. So as we already discussed, functional grammar refers to teaching grammar in a functional way, means where you are focusing on meaning and usage. So how do we plan such kind of practice in the classroom without giving technical information to the students. So today's uh, topic or uh, focus will be this. Not only today, even in the next class, I will be extending this uh, discussion. Okay. 
so grammar as we know operates at two levels word level sentence level so whenever you say you are teaching grammar to students either you are teaching a word level element aspect of grammar or you are dealing a sentence level aspect isn't it only these two possibilities are available so same way when you are planning functional practice also first uh, let's take a word level example okay okay for example my first target is pronouns right so i have listed down personal pronouns there because so many types of pronouns are there i cannot teach all of them at a time so what did i do i have to prioritize on most si simple and most commonly used so among all pronouns which pronouns are used most frequently obviously personal pronouns so in that personal pronouns we have a list i we you she she the they so now say i am taking a very simple example i mean very basic example i should say because in the high school level teaching pronouns will be a very basic uh, very very basic concept according to me most of your children should have learned but i am taking the worst case possible worst case possible because there are teachers who complain to me that my ninth standard student doesn't know alphabet my eighth standard student doesn't know alphabet right there are teachers from whom i have heard this so worst case scenario let's let's uh, uh, you know understand so if pronoun is your target no ideally what you are saying is when you teach pronoun to students your students it's not about understanding the meaning of the pronoun okay it's not just understanding the meaning of the word because if it is meaning of the word i you can easily explain the meaning using mother tongue i means uh, you will say in kannada nanu in telugu nenu no uh, in malayalam probably you will say i means nyan right that's all the student has learned the meaning but that is not important here okay you want to give formal information about it yes you will start giving today let us talk about pronouns what is a pronoun pronouns are so and so types in that personal pronouns are there this is first person singular this is formal knowledge but as i said no formal knowledge at all so i am just thinking i am just planning my uh, functional grammar class if i have to teach pronouns to my students how can i plan the practice in the class see every pronoun if a student has to use a pronoun the student will be using that pronoun in a sentence right in a real life how do we communicate even if you want to use a word that word should come within a sentence so for every word the sentence where it comes is a context please understand this importantly that sentence itself is the context the situation where the word is used so all you have to think is which pronoun is your focus and you have to create the context in such a way that the student gets to use the target pronoun for example here i have i we you all these are personal pronouns so where do i start i have to take one at a time so let me start with i first person singular so i so if my student has to use i in real life remember my student should be able to make a sentence about himself he is saying something about himself so can i think of some contexts where my student talks about himself what i'll do is i'll keep this context simple for example i am suman my name is suman so i said i am suman next i have said i am a uh, teacher like in my case i am a teacher or if i am a student i am in class 8 i am from mysore means my my place so these are all some common and simple ways where uh, the student is uh, can use i am and if you notice i have linked this with an important language function called introducing yourself right introducing yourself so uh, just just take one sentence at a time and say i am suman what does this sentence mean you can actually do this discussion in the mother tongue mother tongue can be a very good tool while teaching english right it can be a good scaffolding tool now many teachers have this wrong impression that mother tongue should not be used in the english class at all this is a very wrong idea because research modern research also is advocating the use of mother tongue because the entire knowledge system of the child is already existing in the mother tongue 
if you know how to use it mother tongue can be the most powerful tool when you are introducing english english vocabulary english structures etc many teachers have wrong impression about mother tongue because because unknowingly some teachers were overusing mother tongue they were overusing mother tongue in the english class to such an extent that english classes turned out to be mother tongue classes <laughs> because teachers started translating stories uh, rhymes everything into mother tongue because students have to understand the meaning this is what teachers used to think it's not the meaning right meaning is just to facilitate language learning that's all so that's why you know over usage led to wrong impression no no don't use mother tongue at all so you can say for example um i mean i i don't know all the languages i can use one or two languages for example kannada i am suman andre enu andre enu nanu suman andre nanna hesaru suman nimma hesaru enu what is your name like this in telugu for example nenu suman ante na peru suman uh, uh, nee peru enti come on tell me what is your name e sentence use cheyali like this this is how i'll prompt my students so my students will say i am suman they'll start saying my name next my next target is okay neevu student ah neevu teacher ah see nanu teacher neevenu neevu teacher ah illa neevu student so nenu teacher you kuda vidyarthi ah so or in malayalam nyan suman ni i don't know i i have very limited uh, so i am trying to use uh, 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 i mean ni pera what do, what do you say in malayalam uh, ni peru ni peru enna is it right um, nindu peru enda ah ning ningu peru enda ah right ningu i just not like that nindu peru enda oh nindu peru enda no right so yeah this is how you will prompt the student you will prompt the student to use this uh, structure so once uh, the student start saying name immediate target is you, you immediate target is you have to give such context where student repeatedly uses i am i am i am because here your target is i right i has to be repeatedly used but different informations uh, info pieces of information the student should talk about himself so you are providing the context because you are making it easy for the student see it is easy to say start any say, begin any sentence beginning with i am but what will happen that way is students will start making meaningless sentences senseless sentences or artificial sentences which don't apply to them see our objective is teach language teach grammar in such a way that this is useful for them in real life so this is why i am creating context in such a way that that whatever student says it is real about them either about them about their life about their family or about their friends so next target is i am a teacher or a student the teacher the student has to say are you a student or are you a teacher means i am obviously they will all say i am a student next the teacher next the student has to say next uh, you have to talk about which class are you from right if you are in class 8 you should say i am in class 8 if you are class 9 you should say i am in class 9 this is how you have to say so by the end of four sentence practice your student is able to introduce himself or herself grammatically perfect grammatically correct way so this this is one example where my target is teaching of pronouns but what did i do whether my see one thing actually uh, there is a common misunderstanding also here many teachers think that when they are teaching pronouns when they are teaching adjectives when they are teaching adverbs they are teaching grammar wrong you are not teaching grammar you see you are calling adverb you are calling adjective these are only grammatical names but take away those labels these are all words isn't it pronouns are words adjectives are words adverbs are words so when you are teaching a word you are rather teaching vocabulary than grammar adjectives is just a technical name you are not teaching grammar ideally ideally you are teaching them words so how do you teach a word meaning and usage meaning and usage that's it 
you are not actually teaching grammar right only thing is you are you are selecting the word category according to one grammar category that's all means you are focusing only on pronouns in today's class you are focusing only on adverbs so please understand that many of them think when you are teaching adverbs you are teaching grammar no you are not teaching grammar adverbs are basically words the only thing is the selection is only one type of word which is adverb please understand this so this is the very basic thing pronouns are very basic thing this is just one example now once your student says start saying i am student i am suman i am in class 8 you can actually make them talk about you can make them talk about uh, other for example other friends where other b forms come into the uh, picture and other pronouns come into the picture because your target is pronoun now your student is able to talk about himself can he talk about his friends so if it is his friends he should say what he should say what should he say for example he should say he is ravi he is a student he is ravi he is a student so let one student say for example this is my class let me imagine that this is my class class so geeta will stand up after this exercise geeta will stand up and say i am geeta i am a student okay i am in class 8 now i will ask other students in the class to stand up and talk about geeta and i'll tell them when you are talking about others you should use he or she and the verb changes to is okay so now your target sentences are he is she is so now i'll i'll make other students uh, repeat what geeta has said they will have to talk about geeta so they will say she is geeta she is a student she is in class 8 so now students are talking about she which is a third person singular so every pronoun that i have to make my students uh, uh, teach i mean i have to teach this is how i have to identify context and make them use the sentences in a real where either they are making sentences about themselves or they are making sentences about uh, you know their friends yes yes sir surya prakash sir judicious use that's the right word mother tongue should be used but it should be used judiciously so judicious means careful wherever and whenever it is necessary now this is one example of pronouns let us take other examples see model auxiliaries i am taking different uh, uh, what you call word level examples to help us understand how can we do pra- functional uh, practice okay so now i'll make it a little more realistic i'll make it a little more realistic for the time being i'll assume that you are all my students for the time being i'll assume that you are all my uh, school students i mean <laughs> school students so you you have to respond as uh, students so if my target is today's topic is model auxiliaries i'll have to pick one model auxiliary at a time one at a time but the problem is each model auxiliary has multiple functions each model auxiliary in english has at least 3 to 4 or 5 different functions so many teachers themselves don't bother to refer so if first thing is you should you should see do you know all the meanings of this model auxiliary can if you don't know simple accept it go to a good grammar book or good dictionary and find out can at least has five meanings at least it has five functions first do i know all the functions if you don't know go refer and then learn okay you have learned now out of these functions which one is most important or which one is used more frequently right your common sense tells you that it is ability we use can for ability this is a basic function so first priority is usage what is used more what is more important okay so i have fixed that can is ability so i'll just i'll just start the class by saying students right students i'll address my students i'll say i can drive okay i'll write that sentence on the blackboard i can drive so do you know the meaning of sentence do you know the meaning of this sentence can you tell in mother tongue okay can you tell in mother tongue bhagyashri can you tell what do you mean i can drive means what is the meaning can you explain me in mother tongue 
భాగ్యశ్రీ భాగ్యశ్రీ ఆర్ ఎనీబడి ఆర్ ఎనీబడి నేను నడపగలను చేయగలను నేను డ్రైవ్ చేయగలను చేయగలను నేను 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 వాహనం అన్న చలాయిసబల్లే ఓడిసబల్లే ఆ నేను ఓడిసబల్లే రైట్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఎనికు ఓడికన్ కరియు ఎనికు ఓడికన్ కరియు మలయాళం ఎనికు ఓడికి ఎనికు ఓడికన్ అరియం ఎనికి ఓడికన్ అరియం వెరీ గుడ్ వెరీ గుడ్ నేను డ్రైవ్ చేయగలను ఓకే ఆర్ యు కెన్ సే నాను డ్రైవర్ నాను డ్రైవర్ ఆడవల్లి ఓడికన్ అరియం ఆ yes yes like this so this is where you are establishing the meaning okay because see my it is not about knowing what is the meaning of can no my student should be able to express ability he should be able to express his abilities he should be able to express others abilities so which means he should make sentences like this so that is why i have selected the target sentence first uh, my student should be able to express his ability so i am starting with myself as an example so i can drive so this is my ability okay so now you should tell me whether you can drive or not i will ask you the question can you drive if you know how to drive you should say i can drive if you don't know driving what will you say look at the second sentence can you read it can you read it students i can't i cannot drive i can't I drive means naaku driving raadu nenu driving cheyalenu nanage driving madakku varalla like this this is how uh, you will establish the meaning okay now i am converting it into a conversation mode because conversation mode means i ask a question and my student uh, uses this target structure because see if my student has to use this structure it has to be realistic somebody has to ask him about his ability no only then my student expresses his ability so i am taking that opportunity i am creating that opportunity by yes in malayalam it is eniku odikan kariyum right so now i am going to ask you questions students be ready to give your responses can you drive uh mamata can you drive mamata no sir i can't sir yeah full sentence you should say i can't drive i can't drive sir i can't drive okay badraya can you drive badraya b badraya can you drive oh. i can pass b prakash can you drive sir i can drive i can drive badraya what about badraya can you drive yes sir i can drive i can drive prabhu yeah yes sir i can drive sir i can drive jansi i no sir i can't drive you can't drive okay yes sir yes you can't drive okay fine now i'll change the question can you cook swarnalata can you cook i can cook sir i can cook okay shiva prasad naidu can you cook sir i can't cook sir i can't you can't cook okay shri lata shri lata yes can you swim i can cook sir can you swim no no sir i can't swim you can't swim okay arjunan can you swim yes sir i can i can swim okay right now this is how i have to i can keep changing the verbs once the students are familiar with the, i can drive i can't drive now the sentence structure is established in real life if your student has to express ability what is the sentence structure he or she has to use you have already established now you the practice can be a little fast you can change the verb you can change the action can you drive can you swim can you i mean can you climb a mountain keep changing keep changing the situations and let students give you answers 
right once your students are able to give you answers now let them talk about other abilities right for example i ask a question to prabhu prabhu can you drive prabhu will say i can drive okay prabhu will say i can drive now i should tell the whole class come on class tell me what prabhu has said then the whole class will say he can drive or prabhu can drive either take the name or take the pronoun now your students are talking about see let us say 30 students are in the class i will ask this question only to one person right for example i will ask jansi uh, can you cook i will ask yes sir i can cook sir okay jansi said i can cook now jansi stands up jansi stands up and says i can cook all the remaining 29 as soon as jansi says i can cook all the remaining 29 people should say she can cook or jansi can cook jansi can cook so this is how you are enabling students to talk about number 1 their abilities number 2 their friends abilities means they are able to express their abilities they are able to express their friends abilities now in real life this is what we do no whenever you are expressing an ability in real life either you express about your ability or you express your your friends or your family members or anybody your brother your sister's ability so that is what you have done through this activity you have given your students opportunity to express ability in a realistic manner but initially you are very slow and patient see you are not my real children please understand as soon as i asked questions you gave easily but i don't get easy this kind of easy answers in my real class you also know that right because you are adults you are like you are teachers your language is uh, uh, you have more proficiency so as soon as i asked you started giving me confident answers and easy answers but then i have to be very patient and then very slow in my real classes i have to establish the meaning mainly establishing the structures and meaning is very very important so in this process have i anywhere used the word model auxiliary have i used the word model auxiliary no sir no sir no sir have i used any other grammatical term like present no, tense auxiliary this no, is no. a no. interrogative no, sentence no. nothing never but but now let us understand let us understand uh, incidentally what students have learned your target was model auxiliary but because you are teaching grammar in context in a context your students have not only learned model auxiliary can they have also learned the important sentence structure i auxiliary main verb subject auxiliary main verb they have also learned a negative sentence i can drive is positive sentence i can't drive is negative sentence so sentence types is also covered sentence structure one basic sentence structure is covered this is covered and incidentally drive the verb drive is also practiced pronoun is also come into practice but in your mind only you know that your target is model auxiliary but by now you should have understood the basic logic of this process whether your target is pronoun whether your target is uh, a verb whether your target is model auxiliary doesn't matter ultimately everything should come in a sentence and that is where your uh, intelligence lies create a simple sentence which every student can used to talk about himself or others that is the point i am trying to make here okay we have seen pronoun we have seen model auxiliary next uh, we'll show we'll take another example adjectives now these adjectives you can decide to teach separately irrespective of the lesson or you can pick one adjective from your present lesson you are currently you are teaching a lesson or you have just taught a lesson again one at a time please remember one at a time normally when we introduce words uh, new words difficult words we just ask students to go through the glossary and we say make your own sentences that is not uh, that is an easy target easy task for teacher it is easy to say make your own sentences 
If a student gets it right, we'll say right. If a student gets it wrong, we'll say wrong. No. We have to establish the meaning like this and identify the context and making it making it easy for the student. So, for example, in this case, I have selected uh, helpful as one adjective. So, first, let me establish the meaning. Okay. Helpful. Students, does anybody know the meaning of helpful? Right. If you know the meaning of helpful, you can say in your mother tongue. Ideally, because... You are, you know, I am not look, treating you as teachers. So, what do you mean by helpful? Can you explain in your mother tongue? Because I am, I am thinking that you are dealing a very, very. Sahakari. Sahayam Seva. Sahakari. Sahakari and the area of the Sahayam Seva. Right? Yes. This is where, this is how I am establishing the meaning. Because by eliciting this response, I am one thing, number one. See, everything that I introduce in the class, as a teacher, I can say it directly. But if you notice, I am not saying. First, I am eliciting from my student. Why? Because my classroom is a student-centered classroom, not a teacher-centered classroom. So, as much as possible, I will elicit from my student. First, I will ask one of my students if they know anything. That is the re main reason why I am not telling anything. I am eliciting. I am asking you. So when it comes from the students, it will be good. You will know who knows already, who doesn't know already. Right? Yes. Yeah. Sahaya Karam. Right. In Malayalam. Sahayam in Telugu. It's almost the same. No? We have the Dravidian connect. So many words will look similar. Right? Yeah. Okay. So helpful. Now, just think like this. You have established the meaning. Now, if you can, you can just say, it's easy to say, make a sentence using helpful. See, your students don't know enough English, even if you tell the meaning of helpful. So simply, simply think, as a teacher, I have to think, if my student has to use helpful in a sentence, what is he doing? He is saying that somebody is helpful. Either he is describing a friend or a person, or he is talking about a tool. Some tool is very helpful. Yes or no? So he is describing a person or an object. So why don't you create that sentence where your friend or a class, uh, your student will get an opportunity to describe. For example, so this is, uh, let us say this is 8th standard. Okay, as a teacher, I know all the students. So out of these students, uh, let me say, uh, Surya Prakash is helpful. Right? Surya Prakash is helpful. Why did I say that? Because as soon as I said uh, uh, somebody post uh, sentence structures exercise in the group, he has immediately done it. So, I say, I think Surya Prakash is helpful. Okay? So, according to you, this is, let, I mean, this is not your real class, but assume that you are students and this is your real class. Now, I am giving my students opportunity. Okay? Now, you know your friends, right? So, tell any friend who is helpful. You have to take their name and say that person is helpful. Come on, go ahead. Right? Take anybody's name. Anybody, but you should not say, I am helpful. You should talk about your friends ba in this group. Bhagyashri is helpful. Okay, Mamata, Mamata says, Bhagyashri is helpful. Yes. Very good. Next. My brother is helpful. Who, sir? My brother is helpful. helpful. Okay, my brother is helpful. All right. Ah. My daughter is helpful. helpful. My daughter, yeah. My, my daughter father is, is so helpful. Yeah, my father is helpful. Very good. My colleagues are so, helpful. Lakshman is helpful. Are helpful. So, firstly, I will give you the class because students, it will be easy for them to relate. Uh, that's why I said, you see, first, I am I'm thinking about everything. First, in class, why did I say Ravi is helpful in class? First, let students talk about their friends. Next, okay. extend it to the family. Who is helpful in your family? Next, like that. Yeah, go ahead. Who is helpful in your family? My, My husband is helpful. Is helpful. Your husband is? My wife is helpful. brother is helpful in my family. Okay, your brother is very helpful. My mother is helpful in my family. Okay, mother is helpful. Okay, right. My, my sister is helpful. 
your sister is helpful. Okay, wonderful. Now the next target word is, is not. Sorry, your son is helpful. Very good. You are lucky that you have a helpful son. Not all all mothers have a, you know helpful sons. My mother is helpful. Your mother is helpful. Mothers are always helpful, madam. You don't. My neighbors are helpful. Okay, neighbors are helpful. Very good. How nice. You are lucky. Whoever said that, Prasanna Lakshmi, you are lucky because getting helpful neighbors is very. <laughs> Very difficult. My friend is helpful. Our school sir is helpful. My teacher is helpful. My friend is helpful, sir. My friend is helpful. Okay, which friend? Our school sir is helpful. Close, close friend. Okay, right. See, this is this is just one. My colleagues are helpful. The colleagues are helpful. Wonderful. My colleagues are helpful. My colleagues are. My daughter is helpful. My daughter is helpful. Now, in this case, have you noticed? Have you noticed how people are responding? They are going on responding. I am having a tough time to monitor their responses. You know why? Students. It's not about students. Human beings love to talk about themselves. They love to talk about themselves. They love to talk about their family. Anything that belongs to them. So this is what you are doing here. You are relating. You are creating context in such a way that. Your students are getting up. Students love to talk about themselves and their family members, isn't it? I don't think anybody sir. will disagree with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Same thing applies. Same thing applies. So helpful. Introduce five to six words in one go. You don't have to introduce too many because again, I am thinking of the worst case possible. the remote teacher i am a very remote teacher my students don't have any exposure at all i work in a remote area forest area even in that kind of area if this kind of practice one at a time it will definitely work because you are establishing meaning you are making you are keeping it simple you are relating it to real life like this depending on the students you can do one by one or if your students are good let us say your students are good average then you introduce 10 adjectives at a time for example helpful resourceful kind talkative reserved reserved simple hard working punctual intelligent smart or identify positive traits talk about the meaning list list these adjectives on the board establish the meaning using mother tongue right See normally what happens is these are all very simple things, but we don't pay attention. Okay. Yeah. See, for example, let us say a teacher is uh, uh, a teacher is uh, what you call uh, uh, introducing a word, and the teacher asks a question about a word. Let us say one or two students respond to the question and give right answer. The teacher assumes that all the other students know the answer. This is such a common uh, sensical thing, but. if one or two students respond that means that only that student knows the answer or understands that word how about the other students do they know the meaning so it's all you always have to verify cross check by asking questions maybe they don't know right so it's always that's why it's important to always establish especially if your students are below average uh, students right you are working in a very remote kind of areas where your students don't know how to make sentences this is how you have to do the basic uh, uh, you know practice establishing the structure